So when did you get the idea for Four Rules of Love? Eight rules. Eight oh. rules. I love it. Classic. Keep that in the attic. Well, Paul's known me for nearly seven, no, six years now. So the original idea was 52 rules. I was like a rule for every week because I feel like relationships need to be managed every week. I think a lot of people like wait a whole year to go on vacation and they think that in that week we'll figure out our relationship. Like that vacation will take care of some of our issues. And I, I think that's not often enough. I think just like anything, you have to measure it, monitor it every week. And so 52 was my original idea. But my editor was like, J52 rules is overwhelming. Then I was really thinking more consciously about a number. I'm not an expert in this field at all, but I am fascinated by numerology and what certain numbers mean to people. And what's really interesting about the number eight is that obviously it represents infinity or the infinite. And we've always seen that kind of symbol. But then what really fascinated me about the number eight is that it also looks like an hourglass. And I was thinking that so much of looking for love is pressured by time. And we often feel like, oh, well, if I don't have the person I'm going to be with by 30, then life's going to not be complete. Or if I don't have kids by 35 or 40 or whatever it may be. And so I think time and relationships and time and love are so closely connected. I can't take no loss. Huh? I don't even know what it costs. Huh? I hit the ground and it go off. Yeah, hit the ground and it go off. What happens when you're with someone that you love, but you feel like you're not getting the love back? I mean, that's a really challenging scenario that I think a lot of people face and find themselves in. And I think a big reason for that, DeMarco, is that so many of us, we get into a relationship and we think that's the achievement. And we need to readdress, we need to redefine our goals as a couple. We need to redefine where we're headed. Work. Continual yes. work. And I think so many of us think moving in, getting married, having kids, that that's the end. It's actually a continuous process. It never ends. Jay, one thing that I wanted to ask you is, I, I love a rom-com. So like, do I. Like anyone else. <laughs> like, I love, you know, the happy ending. But I've always felt that a lot of the things we've read growing up, from fairy tales to these movies, mm. kind of set you up to be disappointed in what love and relationships really look like. How do you reconcile yeah. the two? Yeah, it's so true. There's this scene in The Notebook where oh. uh, Ryan Gosling's character goes up to Rachel McAdams' character, and he says, I'll be anything you want. I'll do anything you want. And people were like... And it was like, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. I want someone like that who's yeah. just going to uh, bend That's over and fall over. Terrible it's idea. terrible. And then there's another scene where they're on the Ferris wheel and he's hanging off and he's like, I'll let go if you don't go on a date with me. <laughs> yeah. Like, can you imagine like threatening no, someone? Self, and so <laughs> you see, yeah, you see, you see all these really unhealthy ideas. Yeah. And I think the problem is, and I love love too, by the way, and yeah. I love rom-coms and you get addicted to these ideas and now you're looking for them in real life but they don't transpire. Yeah. And so the only way to disconnect is say to yourself, well, wait a minute, I don't see that in reality. I don't see it in my parents' right. relationship. I don't see it in the family members around me. Let me set a new set of rules. Yeah. Let me set a new set of boundaries, principles that I want to live by and that I want love to look like. So we need to learn to define love by our own definition for yeah. ourselves. I think we're so used to taking out our insecurities on our partners, we're so used to taking out our stress on our partners, we're so used to it, and I'm, I'm saying this having done all of these things. And so I just, I just don't think that that's how people change, love, grow together. Like, I think one of the best things for me is that Radhi never makes me feel judged, criticized, or, you know, uh, and, and same back at her. But I think if I felt that way, that doesn't mean you can't give your partner feedback and it doesn't mean you can't improve together. It doesn't mean you're not growing. It just means you're not telling the other person how you think they should be. I meet a lot of people who say, oh, my partner's just not ambitious enough. And I'm like, but did you want an ambitious partner? Like, why was that important to you? And if you wanted that, then you're not going to make someone ambitious. And I think a lot of people want to make their, well, at least people that I speak to want to make their partner more driven or more ambitious. Um, and I'm like, you're not going to do that because that's not how they're wired. And, and that doesn't make them less of an important person or less of a significant person if they want a, a more comfortable, chill life. Do you have any insight of how you deal with the public eye? I find that 
fame being imperfect in the fact that it comes with a lot of judgment or criticism is what detaches you from fame, which is what keeps you humble, grounded, and also protects you from your inevitable mm. irrelevance one day. Mm. And so I think you can get so attached and fixated to fame. And if fame didn't have those stings, then you'd, you'd think fame was the best thing in the world. And you would think that it's the most amazing intoxicating You would lose world. touch with reality, yeah, which is that you're a human. Exactly. And I just had, um, and obviously what to speak of myself, I just had Kevin Hart on the podcast. Mm -hmm. And he was talking about this exact thing where like, his fame, he felt he was indestructible at this point. He felt that nothing could get at him. And he was like, fame let him down. I love love. And I think I undersell myself sometimes at like how much I think about love or know how to make love work. No one's smarter and better at it than Jay Shetty. I've been up, you know, for days and nights just reading your book and doing the workshops. Now, I've been single for seven years. What should time alone teach us? Mm. I would say that time alone is really interesting because I think so much of society is defined by time. You should be married by your 30, have kids by your this age, do this by that age. We have all of these metrics and milestones. And I think when you spend time alone, you get to redefine what's important to you. Being with yourself is so important. I didn't realize that when I was younger. Can you realize that when you are younger? It's hard. I think so many people feel that they lose themselves in a relationship. And the truth is we didn't lose ourselves. We didn't know ourselves in the first place. And when you lose yourself in a relationship, you then have to find yourself in solitude. And so when you find yourself when you're spending time by yourself, you actually discover who you are. And I get it that it's hard to do it when you're younger, but actually it can be the best investment you make, even if it's against everything that you're being pulled towards and all the excitement of a relationship. I'm not saying you need to take three or seven years alone, right? Yeah. You don't need to go and live as a monk, but the idea of spending some time getting to know yourself is probably the best investment, not just for your love life, your career, your purpose, your friendships, for any area of your life. Is there a way you think going towards your friends, you know, marketing yourself to your friends? What is, what is the, because I, I do believe that yeah. is the, the key to all of this for a lot of people. I think one of the biggest things with, with friends is, and you know, I have friends who constantly remind me and ask me all the time, like, Jay, do you know someone? But it's like, it's really useful knowing, okay, what level of seriousness is this? Because you don't want to be a bad friend to either friend. I don't want right. to introduce someone who's not serious to someone who is serious. Mm. So seriousness level on the spectrum of one to 10, how serious are you about a long-term relationship, right? The second question or that they need to understand is, uh, what are the things that are priorities and what are preferences? Like what are some things that are really important to you and what are some things that are like, eh, I'm, I'm flexible on stuff like this. Mm. Priority could be like, I don't wanna move, I wanna live here. Or someone may say, I don't care where I live, I'm happy to move, I'm happy to meet someone long distance, right? They, you never know. So on that spectrum. And the third thing is keep reminding your friends. I keep getting reminded by friends in my life because I forget I'm busy. I'm sure you're busy. We're all busy. Like you forget. And then someone says to me, hey, Jay, like just checking in, just letting you know that if you meet someone, let me know. And I'm like, oh, wait a minute. I just went to a wedding. I met someone great. I think he'd be awesome. Let me connect you. And so then keeping it fresh for that person helps that person help you out because they're not sitting there thinking about you the whole time. It's really interesting that when you're pursuing someone, you're doing everything you can to win them over. And then after you've won them over and you're in a relationship, you want them to lose an argument. And it doesn't make any sense. You just spent all this time trying to win this person and now you want them to lose. And so I think what happens is we think that you stop making effort when you move in or you get married or you have kids or you celebrate an important anniversary. It's almost like the effort just stops. And so I think that's really what the biggest issue is, is that we stop putting in effort or we stop being as sensitive or present because we're just familiar.